Hello, and welcome to Wellness Wednesday with 3W. Wellness Wednesday is sponsored by 3W Medical for Women, a nonprofit medical clinic offering free of charge or low cost reproductive health services to women in the Seattle area, regardless of income or insurance status. 3W does not profit off of the reproductive health choices women make. The information shared in this podcast is the opinion of the speaker or speakers. Medical information is not intended as individual medical consultation, but for general education only. Always consult your own health professional for personalized advice regarding medical decisions. And if you're in the Seattle area, consider making an appointment to consult with us. I'm Helen Nguyen, CEO and co-founder of 3W Medical for Women and the host of today's podcast. Hi, everyone. This is Helen Nguyen, CEO of 3W Medical for Women. I'm here again with Dr. Adiola Mead, who is a naturopath here to discuss natural mental wellness. Amazing. So, Adiola, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So, just to dive into our question, what are the differences between your approach to mental health as a naturopath versus the traditional approach with medicine? Yes. So the traditional approach is very valid and very helpful. So I think it's important to understand that people are in context, Mm -hmm. right? Things like anxiety and depression, fatigue, things like that can be addressed with diet, Mm -hmm. with lifestyle, Mm -hmm. with community, and all these different ways that are are natural and accessible with herbal medicine, with nutrients, but just making sure you look holistically at some of the reasons why those symptoms might be coming up and affecting mental health, Mm -hmm. and then treating at the root cause of those. And I find a lot of times with conventional medicine, there could be counseling, which is really important and really helpful, therapy and medication. Mm -hmm. But I do find that a lot of times people are given medication when what they need was mostly counseling Mm. or what they need is to to be assessed holistically to okay. figure out if there are deficiencies that would contribute to anxiety, depression, fatigue, you know, mm-hmm. racing thoughts, mm-hmm. uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, things like that. Mm-hmm. There are systems in the body when out of balance that can contribute to those symptoms. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people aren't fully assessed, but they're giving a medication. And the medication has its place. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely has its place. Sometimes when people are in crisis, Mm -hmm. medication takes them back from the brink. Okay. And it has its place. Or when there's serious mental illness, often mm-hmm. with like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, things mm-hmm. like that, medication absolutely has its place. Mm-hmm. But what I see often is that people are put on medication when it's not necessarily the most important step. Yeah. And that they're left on medication. Right. There's no... It's like a Band-Aid. Yeah, and there's no review of whether or not they still need it. I've had patients who are on antidepressants for 20, 30 years because of something that happened years in their past. Yeah, yeah. Like is one that, event. Is that good to be on antidepressants for that long? I'm going to go ahead and say no. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Mostly because if it's not necessary, then mm-hmm. you don't need it, mm-hmm. you know, as yeah. a fundamental yeah. uh, you know, idea. If right. you are no longer in crisis, mm-hmm. if you have taken care of those fundamental needs that help improve physical health, mm-hmm. emotional health, spiritual health, yeah. mental health, yeah. then it renders the medication unnecessary. Right. But I think it's important to assess people and to and to stick with people mm-hmm. um, and understand how their context has changed yeah. so that you can offer the right recommendation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, that that gets me started thinking about like, especially us out here in the Pacific Northwest, we, we don't get a lot of vitamin D, mm-hmm. right? Does that play into like more holistic approach to mental health where your vitamin D numbers are just a little low and that impacts a lot of things, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I've had patients before who were starting to feel more low mood, more depression, mm-hmm. especially seasonally. There's something called seasonal affective disorder yes. where as soon as you have shorter days and there's more darkness during the day, that yeah. the mood follows suit. And that yeah. is a biological process, right? Mm-hmm. So when it's dark, our bodies create more melatonin mm-hmm. so that we can sleep. So in the day, we are up and awake and mm-hmm. our bodies produce more cortisol and thyroid hormones to help 
fuel our metabolism. Right. And then as soon as it starts to get dark, the body produces more melatonin so mm -hmm. that you can decompress, relax, and have a restful sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, we live up here where there are really shorter, shorter days, days in the winter, yeah. so you're making more melatonin, and that mm -hmm. probably makes you more tired in general, but it can also affect the balance between those thyroid hormones mm -hmm. and the cortisol. And if it's out of balance because of that change in the length of the days, mm -hmm. then you can start to tend towards more of that fatigue, depression, and often hypothyroidism as well. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes, and oh, that's wow. another thing to watch out for. So there's vitamin D and uh -huh. making sure that you are at the right levels of vitamin D, but yeah. then... I see a lot of patients with hypothyroid, which means their metabolism is just lower, slower, wow. but that can contribute to depression, weight gain, fatigue. Wow. And a lot of times when we address the low thyroid function, mm -hmm. often in a non-conventional way, but once we address it, mm -hmm. then their energy improves, their mood improves, their metabolism improves, mm -hmm. the outlook improves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have that issue and are put on a thyroid medication, but also an antidepressant mm -hmm. because one of the side effects of this low thyroid function can be depression. Wow. Wow. It's so interesting because the approach is not to rush in and just diagnose and then say, here's a medication that's going to fix all your problems. Your approach is more, let's look at this person from a, a holistic point of view and start tweaking, mm -hmm. right? Tweaking. I, I can just see you like tweaking a machine or something like that, <laughs> like tricky, you know, like if this doesn't work, let's try a little bit of this and this doesn't mm -hmm. work. And I think that's such a such a more intentional approach taking this person as an individual and everything is not just a cookie cutter approach. Right. Right. To healthcare, and, yeah. Yeah, we exist in context, right? Mm -hmm. So it could be the context of our physiological needs. So mm -hmm. there might be deficiencies or excesses that you need to assess, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you have to figure do the work to figure out what it is that this individual person needs. Mm -hmm. Everyone's depression is not the same. Everyone's anxiety yeah. is not the same. And everyone's fatigue is not the same. Yeah. You know, everyone's tendencies are, are different and for different reasons. Some mm -hmm. people might just tend in that direction because of their family history, mm -hmm. their physiological makeup some people had like an event that happened and they never really got over it some people have a mindset that they've learned and cultivated over time and had uh, what's the word what is the word i'm looking for is it ptsd or there's ptsd but you know sometimes in community there is a an ideology that's kind of propagated so like in some mm. families maybe you weren't encouraged in your family, maybe there's like a general negative outlook or mm -hmm. maybe there's a defeatist sort of attitude. And I've mm -hmm. seen that before. So mm -hmm. It's like, well, that's never going to work, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But we internalize those thoughts. Yeah. And then when you're met with challenges, if that's the way you think, then you're more likely to be discouraged, dejected, mm -hmm. and then it's going to affect your mental health. Our thoughts impact our mental health. Mm -hmm. And if we have thoughts that are negative and defeating and discouraging, then mm -hmm. that's sort of the mental and emotional state we're going to be in. So mm -hmm. a lot of times with patients, we work on mindset. Mm -hmm. We work on figuring out what it is that they believe mm -hmm. and then reassessing if it's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you can come to a place where you realize that some of those limiting beliefs are not actually true, then you're free to choose beliefs that open you up mm -hmm. to try different things, to expect good things, to hope. Yeah. And that makes a big difference in mental health. Wow. Wow. That's so cool that you can do that. That's so cool of that because that I think that's a huge piece that's missing in medicine. Huge piece that because it's very much profit driven and numbers driven, right, that you're not able to slow down and look at that person and recognize that person as this beautiful individual that sometimes just needs someone to like talk to and and look at them and say, you know, this issue right now is being is being connected to these other issues, but let's let's get to the root problem Absolutely. versus a band-aid over that root problem. Yeah. <laughs> so how does mental health relate to burnout? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, because I feel like our world right now is go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And I know I, as a working mother, <laughs> that I feel like I'm always on the edge of just <laughs> crashing. So yeah, just just as a working mother yourself. Yeah. Right? How how do we balance that with our mental health and burnout and what's expected of us? Yeah. There are lots of different ways that mental health is, you know, kind of tied up into burnout. Because mm -hmm. burnout, what is it? Just like exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you just, you can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I've 
I'm, I'm at the end of my rope, right, mm-hmm. is burnout. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people, like, in the corporate world or working world where they're getting, they're reaching the point where it's like, I just can't do this anymore. Yeah. And hence, like, the great resignation, the yes. great reassessment. Yeah. So... Along those lines, I think it's important then to, instead of get to the point where you're burnt out and needing a great reassessment, is just to reassess on a regular basis mm. and to take the time. I think we don't take the time. We have this like frantic yeah. hustle, go, yeah. go, go, produce, project, position, you know, present yourself in a certain way, yes. hit these numbers, put yeah. these goals up on the board. Achieve, achieve, achieve. Mm -hmm. That is our culture. Mm -hmm. But it leaves out the value of contemplation, Mm -hmm. of alignment with values, Mm -hmm. of things that are valuable that are not monetary. Yeah. And things that are valuable that aren't on every single other person's scale Mm -hmm. of value. Mm -hmm. So I was just on a call with a sister who was saying that she hasn't reached all her business goals, Mm -hmm. but she has a lot of peace. That's beautiful. She has a lot of peace. She's spending time with her family. She wrote a book and she hasn't gone on a book tour yet because she's thinking strategically about how she can show up in service with this book aligned with her values and groups that are also aligned with her values. So Mm -hmm. she's just Mm -hmm. letting that be a creative process while she enjoys time with her children and she works on projects she already has going. Yeah. So we started saying that peace is the payment. Peace is the payment, you know? So she's not burnt out. Yeah. Because she's taking a step back. Mm -hmm. She's doing things that fill her up. She's spending Mm -hmm. time with people that she loves. She's Mm -hmm. contributing in ways that are meaningful for her. Mm -hmm. And she's doing it in her own time. And I think that is a remedy to burnout, Mm -hmm. is always reassessing, who am I? What is important to me? Am I able to contribute in ways that I consider meaningful? Mm -hmm. Am I around people that I love? Mm -hmm. If some of those answers are no not yet then how can we start to cultivate some of these values in our lives Mm -hmm. how can we take time for ourselves in a way that fills us up so that we have something to give you can't give what you don't have Mm -hmm. so burnout i think a lot of times is just buying into that ideology that we have to go 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 give 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 Mm -hmm. but you can only give to a certain point until you're empty right Right. so We need to keep refilling ourselves with social interactions that are positive, creating and being in cultures, either like personal community cultures, even workplace cultures that are supportive, that are safe, Mm. that allow us to to, To be ourselves, to be ourselves, (laughs) to be our authentic selves, to thrive and decide what thriving looks like for us. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, then... If you have all these external goals that are impressed upon you Mm -hmm. and you're not reaching them, then you start to feel anxious, Mm -hmm. right? Like, oh my gosh, I'm not hitting my goals. You know, people expect this of me. It's not happening. You start to feel anxious or you might start to feel depressed. Like, I, I'm, this is not going to happen for me. Yeah. And you start to pick away at your own sense of self and your yeah. own sense of value. Yeah. You turn in on yourself. Yeah. Whereas if we take the time to build ourselves up and a practice of that self-reflection, mm-hmm. then we can develop our own set of values mm-hmm. and go from there and feel confident and have our, our peace mm-hmm. to to move in ways that are aligned with our values and mm-hmm. we can protect that peace and also protect our mental health. Mm-hmm. That's such a good reminder, especially to moms. I just feel like there's this constant weight to be everything <laughs> as a mom. You know, I never thought that having um, naively, I never thought having children, they're my boss. My son is my boss. Mm-hmm. I have a boss that's one year old. Right. <laughs> and he dictates my world mm-hmm. right now. And relinquishing that control, relinquishing, like, how do I make sure he's well fed? Like, I, he, I'm done feeding him for one time, one meal, and I'm already thinking of the next two. But then I also work. And I'm also a daughter and I'm also a wife mm-hmm. and I'm also a sister and I'm also an auntie. And like, I feel like our world expects us to excel in all of those titles to the best of our capacity. And I think women, we have this innate gift to give, 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 and then we burn out mm-hmm. and then we crash. Mm-hmm. So what would you say to a patient that comes into your Um, practice and say, I've given everything. I've given everything I could. I'm at the lowest. 
I don't know if it's burnout. I don't know if it's depression. I don't. What would you say to some a patient of yours that that came in with? So yeah. if they say they've given everything, then I'd say that it's time for them to receive, to receive care, mm-hmm. to receive grace, mm-hmm. to receive compassion, to be filled up again. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Is because they had a great capacity. Mm-hmm. So it's not a failure at all. Mm-hmm. It's because they had great capacity that they were able to give for so long to mm-hmm. so many. Mm-hmm. But because they weren't getting filled up in the process, mm-hmm. now it's time to receive and to receive deeply to figure out what it is they need at that point yeah. and to take their time getting filled up again. Yeah. 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 What would your first recommendation be for this patient? Rest. Rest. Mm -hmm. Like uninterrupted rest. Mm -hmm. Yep. As often as possible. And that can look differently for different people. Yeah. Right? For Mm -hmm. some people, it's just like catching up on sleep. For other people, it's art and creative endeavors. Mm -hmm. For other people, it's spending time with others. For other people, it's spending time alone. Not doing anything at all. Yeah. For some people, it looks like being very busy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But... It needs to be something that really rejuvenates them and fills them up, but to intentionally take the time for it. Okay. It's just to start to rest and to bake it into their schedule and to start to value that time. Mm. I think as a culture, we don't value Value. rest. We don't. We think it's it's lazy or it's a waste of time or it should be more productive, but we have inherent value that is aside from what we produce and what we give. Yeah. Because we're not programmed because we're not taught to know how to communicate i need rest Mm -hmm. i need time for myself do you do that with your patients of just like practicing and helping them communicate with their people in their world be like do you do role play (laughs) i'm just trying to imagine like how do you approach because i don't even know how to communicate that Mm -hmm. to be quite honest Mm -hmm. yes we we will do role play yeah necessary (laughs) if it's just like i don't really know how to how to say that Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's less about what to say and more about what you do Mm, that's so good so if you start doing things like taking time for yourself if someone asks you yeah. about it yeah then you can say i'm taking some time for myself because yeah. i feel really tired yeah wow. yeah so it's about just setting up those boundaries to protect yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and realizing what you need and again just like consistently reassessing what that is because it changes today yeah. you might need a nap tomorrow you might need to be with your sister tomorrow yeah. you know the day after that you might need to be completely by yourself for mm-hmm. hours and hours and hours and yeah. then bringing in that community to help facilitate what you need but if you don't know what you need you can't communicate it to anyone else yeah and it's not selfish absolutely not it's not selfish i think a lot of women think okay if i take time for myself i'm being selfish if you are filled up, mm-hmm. then you have a greater capacity to give. And as mm-hmm. women, that's really just what we do. Yeah. We do it naturally whether we're filled up or not. Exactly. <laughs> but once yeah. you have those resources, I mean, I'm sure every woman can remember a time where they had some time to themselves and then they came back to all their responsibilities with fresh eyes and with mm-hmm. fresh energy. Mm-hmm. And when you do love mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So it's not selfish at all to take time for yourself. Mm-hmm. It's I think selfish would be having all the rest in the world, all the resources in the world, and not sharing it. Mm, that's gold. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you just continue to function in burnout? What happens physically? I know you mentioned, you know, anxiety, depression, but what's the most extreme thing that you've seen in your practice when someone just functions in burnout? Debilitating fatigue. Just so tired. Mm -hmm. I can't get out of bed. And when you're that tired, it's really hard to take care of yourself. So it's really hard to make a meal. Sometimes it's hard to even eat a meal. Yeah. It's really hard to stay hydrated. So, you know, you could say, here's some diet and lifestyle things mm-hmm. you can do. Go ahead and take a walk and yeah. stay well hydrated. And yeah. Eat some protein. It's really hard to do those things when mm-hmm. you are completely exhausted. Mm-hmm. And that is, yes, physical exhaustion, but also mm-hmm. mental, mm-hmm. emotional, spiritual exhaustion. It's mm-hmm. really hard to reach out of that once you've hit that point. Mm-hmm. And that's where you need community. You need people around you who can lift you up. You need mm-hmm. people who know you at your best mm-hmm. and can recognize, hey, it looks like, you know, things have changed and you're feeling differently. Like, mm-hmm. how can I how can I support you? Mm-hmm. We need that. But, yeah, I think at the 
at the worst, it's just like complete and utter exhaustion. Sometimes for people, it's uncontrollable, generalized anxiety, mm. which is also exhausting. Mm-hmm. It's depression or maybe suicidal ideation. Mm. It's just like mm. feeling like they have nothing left and, mm-hmm. and connecting their sense of worth with what they're able to give mm-hmm. and then feeling like if I have nothing left, then I'm not worth being here. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... We need community. We mm-hmm. need to be around people who know us, love us, and can step in and advocate for us. Yeah. And then we need to start dismantling these ideas that we are what we produce, we are what we yeah. do, we are what we give. We are inherently valuable, irrespective of what other people receive from us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that we can build back up again. Yeah. You know, burnout is not the last word. Yeah. You can definitely get the resources you need and take your time and listen to your body and then reassess mm-hmm. what's next after that. But mm-hmm. it's, it's utterly possible and I see it every day. We are such resilient people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're built resilient. And I think if, you know, if you're one of those people out there that have, you know, your life is going okay and you identify someone in your life that just probably needs a quick check-in, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I wish more people would check in on me. <laughs> yeah. I wish more people would be like, hey, just how are you, Helen? You know, just how is it today? And I feel so much better when someone actually does call and say that and I can just like dump my day. I feel so good afterwards because mm-hmm. it, it physically feels like this weight yeah. is no longer on my shoulders and someone else is sharing it with me. And I think more people. Go and see Adiola. <laughs> Go and see Adiola. Because that's how I feel when I talk to you. Because you just bring just such joy and hope. And it's so genuine. And that's sometimes that that's what you really need is just mm-hmm. someone to genuinely listen and be concerned and love you for where you're at. And don't you don't have to apologize for anything. You're just having a bad day. Mm-hmm. And just doing that sometimes helps. You know, you mentioned here, like, it impacts your entire body. It does. It does. So reach out to this beautiful person that's in front of me, Adiola. Go see her. If you want to see her here, you can see her here too. I'm sure she's, she'll make the trek out here again. <laughs> just, you know, it's just so that the two of us can hang out. But <laughs> I hope that we can be that space. You know, 3W can be that space for any of our patients as well. That's one of our core values is holistic care is approaching you as a patient and looking at all these pieces that make up who you are and not dismissing any of those pieces. And I think that's key to especially women's health because we put so much on ourselves Mm -hmm. and society puts so much on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's not just us complaining. It's a real thing. Oh, it's real. (laughs) It's absolutely real. I roll my eyes when I'm just like, okay, I didn't make that up, okay? (laughs) You did not make that up. It is real. And I think it's because women do have great capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, we can multitask. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. We can give and love to many, many people at at one time. We are industrious. Yes. We are. We make kids. We make them. (laughs) We like keep them in our bellies and then they they come out and we, we, we have this beautiful gift of like making people. Yeah. We can make people. But yeah. then what does it look like when yeah. a woman is making a baby? It looks yeah. like her like eating a sandwich. <laughs> like yeah. s- it looks effortless. <laughs> you know? She's like sleeping and making a baby. She's like, you know, buttering toast and making a baby. Yeah. You know? But yeah. that is the nature of yeah. women. We yeah. allow things to grow. Yeah. We allow life to bloom. Yeah. We allow good to unfold. Right. Right? Yeah. And how we do that is by taking care of ourselves. Yeah. yeah. A baby grows healthy when yeah. the mom is taking care of herself. Yeah. Or someone is taking care of the mom, right? Right, right. So yeah. we eat and we sleep and we hydrate and we <laughs> exercise. And before yeah. you know it, you have a healthy baby. Yeah. And you're healthy. And, and you're then healthy. you contributed to something so much greater than yourselves. You don't even realize it. Mm-hmm. And that you and that child continue to give to your community. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's this replication of goodness and hope and it's a ripple effect that we don't even realize. And it's just such a celebration of womanhood and what we can do and what we can give. And it's like so cool. It's It's such a gift, such a gift. So 
thank you so much for coming into the studio and, and and reminding us that mental health, wellness, our approach to our mental health, our approach to physical health is all linked and it can be addressed in a way that's very serious and it can be addressed in a variety of ways. Absolutely. Variety. So many different ways. And we mental health is not just in your mind. Yeah. It's in your whole body. Yeah. It's in your relationships. It's yeah. in our communities. It's mm-hmm. in our culture. Mental mm-hmm. health is multifactorial and yeah. you really can address the different aspects of it mm-hmm. and affect different parts of it. So Mm -hmm. if I start to eat on a regular schedule, I'm less likely to be hypoglycemic Mm -hmm. and have the low energy and sort of low mood feelings that come with hypoglycemia. And Mm. all I did was eat some nuts and raisins, you know? Yeah. So those things are always intertwined. And I think that's so important for us to remember. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for reminding us, reminding me, reminding our listeners out there. There's some websites and Adiola's website, actually, that we'll be posting on when we publish this podcast. So please check her out. She's a wonderful, wonderful resource. And have a great day. Be well. Today's episode of Wellness Wednesday with 3W is sponsored by local Seattle naturopath and founder of the 40 Day Fresh Start program, Dr. Adiola Mead. Thank you, Dr. Mead, for your support of 3W and for making it possible for us to continue bringing new episodes of this podcast to our community. For more information about 3W, please visit our website at 3wmedical.org. That's the number three, the letter W, medical.org. From there, you can learn more information about the services we provide, book an appointment, or make a donation if you'd like to support our mission. You can also call our office at 206 588-0311. That's 206-588-0311. If you like this episode, please share it with others and consider subscribing on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, stay healthy and be well.